Hi gang, here's a powerful Corona motor I made, also known as an electrostatic motor or atmospheric motor. In this video mainly I'll show you how it's made and then show it in action. Here's how I made it. First I make the rotor. For the shaft I'm using this brass from a hobby store. For the cylinder I start with a peanut butter jar since it has nice long straight and parallel sides. I drill holes in the bottom and in the cover that are a little larger than the shaft. You'll see why shortly. I cut some plastic discs and put holes in the centers for the shaft. These holes fit the shaft fairly well. I then cover the inside of the flat part with kitchen aluminum foil. And I attach the discs to the cylinders temporarily. I'll hot glue them permanently later. Next to make the electrodes. For the electrodes I'll use these 10 paint varnish and wood scraping blades that I got from Home Depot. An even number of them are needed. You'll see why later. I like them because they have a long, straight, sharp edge. Filing the corners round, especially the ones at the sharp edge, means less of the electric field will be concentrated at the corners. Instead, the electric field should be spread out along the sharp edge. I then cut a bunch of strips of plastic from a hobby store. After making holes at both ends, I secure nylon bolts from Home Depot using tie straps. I hot glue a blade to each plastic strip and make a hole for another nylon bolt. This one's for connecting a wire later. Lastly, I coat all edges except for the sharp one with Corona Dope to minimize losses in those directions. That includes all the corners. And here are all 10 finished electrodes. Now to make the stator. I start by drawing the shape for an end piece on wood and screwing two pieces together. Next comes drilling a hole for the shaft and cutting them out. The result is these two end pieces. These are the bearings I'll be using. They're ceramic dry bearings, which I bought on eBay. To mount the bearings, I drill holes in some plastic plates. Use a plastic cutting knife to cut them and hot glue the bearings to them. After drilling a few more holes in the end pieces, I bolt the bearing plates in place. Notice that while they're still loose, the holes in the plates are big enough to allow me to adjust the placement of the bearings as needed. Finally, the end plates are mounted together using a base made of two pieces of wood. But I realize that my bolts are too long. The cylinder won't fit so the bolts need to be shortened. Luckily this is one of those rare occasions when the bolt is the right size for one of the bolt cutting holes in my tool. Otherwise I'd have to cut them with pliers or a saw. This time the cylinder will fit. And that's the finished stator. Time for assembly and adjusting. First comes hot gluing the plastic discs on the ends of the cylinders to the shaft. Then that's put on the stator. A little tape on each end keeps the shaft from moving in and out. Remember that I temporarily taped these plastic discs to the cylinder. They can be adjusted so that the cylinder is centered with respect to the shaft. To do that, I put an electrode on the top, pointing straight down at the cylinder. When I spin the cylinder, you can see the gap between the electrodes and the cylinder isn't even. So I keep adjusting the cylinder on those discs until the gap stays as even as I can get it for a complete rotation. Much better. Then I hot glue the disc to the cylinder and remove the temporary tape. After that comes the balancing. When the cylinder is turned, it always stops with the same side down. By adding a little weight to the opposite side, I get it to stop only wherever it happens to be when it runs out of energy. When putting on the electrodes, I noticed that some of the slots I'd made are a little too large for the bolts, but they were made that way for adjustability. So I add some homemade plastic washers when mounting the electrodes. And here are the electrodes all in place for the first time. Lastly, I put ring connectors on wires, connect them to the electrodes, and put the electrodes in place. The other ends of the wires go to this common ring connector. That goes to a nylon bolt where the high voltage or ground wire will also be connected later. That's followed by a round metal ball. The same thing happens at the other end of the motor. Notice that this electrode is connected to this end, the next electrode is connected to the other end, the next one after that goes back to this end, and so on. That's so that every second one will be connected to a high voltage source and the others to earth ground. And that's why I said near the beginning that there is an even number of electrodes. Time to see it in action. To see it working clearly, I attach a fan blade to the shaft. First I bring out my Wimshurst machine. I connect a wire from one side of the spark gap to one end of the Corona motor. And then another wire from the other side of the spark gap to the other end. I crank up the Wimshurst machine and the Corona motor starts turning. It works. For more power, I use my homemade high voltage power supply that I call the Cube. 
I connect the high voltage output to one end of the corona motor, and I connect the wire from ground to the other end. I turn on the power supply and turn it up. As you can see, there's quite a bit of torque here. For more demonstrations, see this other video, where I even do torque, work, and power measurements. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more neat videos like this. That includes one about the cube, the homemade high voltage power supply I used, another about how to make a lifter or anocraft that flies using high voltage, and one about my easy to make homemade T laser. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question, or comment below. See you soon!